webinar hosted by uh, Developing Midwest Project, James Brigand School of Public Health, Brack University. Um, as you know, uh, Midwifery is a very new program in Bangladesh starting from 2012. And um, uh, we are providing midwifery services to uh, different uh, government centers, uh, in the rural level, at the sub-district level, and also private sectors are providing midwifery services. But today we are going to talk about how we are providing education in different countries in this COVID situation. Um, as you know, uh, it is very difficult to provide education, not only in midwifery, but with all other educational arena, but we have to keep going we have to have as, uh, as quality as possible education um, uh, for our midwifery. Uh, given the COVID, uh, we cannot have several um, things we are supposed to do in midwifery education, like practicals, um, like uh, having face-to-face -face conversations, but we can have other ways. Maybe we can have a blending program, which is uh, 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 getting popular, very much popular nowadays. We can have learning from the COVID situation that in future, how can we have our midwifery education go and um, how our teachers even can get trained for providing midwifery education. So uh, a number of things we can learn um, from the webinars, uh, listening from each other. Given that, uh, I would like to start the uh, program. Uh, first, let me try to introduce uh, the um, uh, speakers today. Our first speaker would be Lustri May Winery, who is a lecturer in midwifery program uh, in Indonesia. Uh, when she starts, she will talk about their education program. We have Sheena Halder, who is our uh, very promising instructor in Dhaka academic sites of uh, developing midwifery project. Uh, she is working hard with uh, her colleagues to how to provide quality education online. And then we have Andrea Gilkison, uh, associate head, uh, postgraduate midwifery, senior lecturer in Auckland University and Technology. She has been our friends from the very beginning. We worked together, we developed uh, uh, programs, syllabus, everything. And um, they are very good friends, not only for BRAC University in Bangladesh, also for government's program in Bangladesh. Uh, given that, I would like to start uh, the speaking uh, first speaker would be Lastri May from Indonesia. Lastri. Okay, thank you, Doctor. Uh, my I share screen, yes. Uh, yes, Lastri, you can share your screen. Okay. Uh, maybe uh, my presentation. Uh, can you see it? Yes. Yes. Perfectly. Okay, thank you. Okay, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It is an honor to meet you here. Let me introduce myself. My name is Lasri, lecturer of Midwifery Program in Yatsi College. It is in Tangerang, Banten, Indonesia. Uh, in this opportunity, I would like to present about midwifery education in Indonesia during COVID-19. Okay, uh, in Indonesia, Maternal and infant problem is always considered as focus and concern by Ministry of Health of Republic Indonesia. In 2012, maternal mortality rates is high, reached uh, over 359 per 100,000 live births, and it decreased in 2015 by 305 per 100,000 live births with a total of maternal deaths is 14,640. And then infant mortality rate in 2017 was 15 per 1,000 birth births. 
So the target of, of the SDGs Indonesia to reduce the maternal mortality rate to less than 70. It's hard, but we have to try uh, to less than 70 per 100,000 live births and the infant mortality rate to less than 12 per 1,000 live births by 2030. The most common causes of maternal deaths are hypertensive, heat disorder, obstetric breathing, and then infection, and non-obstetric complication and other causes. So the Indonesian government focus uh, first improving the standard of health services for mothers and children, and then the, uh, the family approach, and then the community movement for healthy living. So the strategies taken include striving for maternal and child health service according to national standards, increasing research and development of maternal and child health, and then regulating health finance, improving the quality oh of human uh, resources in health. In the health sector, especially midwives, providing adequate medicines and health equipment. So the last is regulating profession and health service management as well as community empowerment. Increasing human research in this uh, research in this field of maternal and child health, especially midwives, become concern to us as this institution for organized for midwifery academic with development learning education, research, and community service process to help accelerate reduction in maternal and infant mortality rates in Indonesia. Today, uh, we have uh, 693 institutions with referee education. It consists of about uh, 619 for Diplom 3, and then 60 for Diplom 4, and then 5 bachelor, and then uh, for for Magister Midwifery. For doctorate, we still join to public health science in the high universities. So the overview of midwifery education in Indonesia, especially in Diplom 3, uh, we have the profile of midwives. Indonesia is a care provider and communicator. So the study load is carried out about uh, 110 until 120 semester credit system or SKS and then consists for 40% uh, theoretical learning and then 60% practical learning. The study period uh, about six semester, but if the student take an academic leave, maximum time of study is about eight semester. And then each institution need to be unique because to differentiate, to fulfill the national need of Indonesian city or district. Yeah, every city or district has it owns policies. So uh, referring to standard of midwife service in Indonesia, it must following the criteria essential and comprehensive midwife care, promotive and preventive efforts, early detection of risk factor and complication, and then first aid kit for emergency obstetric neonatal care, collaboration for interprofessional health provider, collaboration in case non-physiological maternal, neonatal. And then case of physiology with disease as well as midwifery uh, service in collaboration other health teams in basic emergency obstetric neonatal care. Therefore, effort made to ensure that midwife education in Indonesia meets national needs and uh, its competence in dealing with maternal and child health problems in the community. So what about a midwifery program in Yatsi College? Uh, it has 118 semester credit system, uh, consists of 40% theory-based learning and 60% practice-based learning. A uh, lot study about uh, eight hours a day or 48 hours per week. And the study period uh, between six until eight semester and we have special program of entrepreneurship, complementary therapy, and then innovation on herbal products from Indonesia. So he, here are sample, some sample from innovation product. 
uh, of my uh, student with wifery. There are uh, beauty tea and then cymbophagon oils for message and aromatherapy and then stretch mart oil for pregnant women and then beef liver snack it is for pregnant uh, mom with uh, anemia and then pregnancy cookies and then shredded snack head feeds for helping uh, protein needs for postpartum mother who have post sexual ones and then sauropus leaf snack for breastfeeding mom and then spinach snake and pill chip for snack for mom postpartum moms and then the complementary therapy we introduce uh, our student with prenatal massage uh, yoga for pregnancy and postpartum and then baby massage and then gentle birth and water birth for gentle birth and water birth is forbidden in indonesia but we have still uh, learning to explore how to be midwives to uh, get a natural birthing and we explore it in Bali Indonesia with Ibu Robin Lim in Bumi Sehat Clinic and then how about COVID in Indonesia we know that uh, 31st of December 2020 China report to World Health Organization uh, for the new cases of COVID-19 and then in Indonesia, 2nd March 2020, Mr. President Joko Widodo announcement the first cases COVID-19 in Indonesia. So the last update in 23rd August 2020, we have uh, 153,535 confirmed positive COVID-19 and then the death is about 6,680. So the case fatality rate in Indonesia is about 4.68%. It is higher uh, than the world, about 3.79%. So you can see this uh, map, distribution map. Uh, it is the past two months. On June, uh, 18 June 2020, the color more dark uh, red zone then uh, for now in 18 August uh, 2020. So uh, this is our location. Our city have a red zone uh, because uh, we have 70, uh, 776 confirmed positive for the COVID-19 and then 44 of deaths. So uh, uh, on 15 June 2020, Indonesian Ministry of Education and Culture with Ministry of Health and Ministry of Home Affairs launched about education policies during COVID-19. So the principles are health and safety for students, educators, staff education, family and society are priorities major in establishing learning policies. So we have regional zone classification. There are a red zone, orange zone, and yellow zone. Uh, the government strict to do the learning process by online or study from home. And then the green zone, uh, the government allowed to do process by face-to-face -face and then have strict COVID prevention protocols. Except for final year student, uh, they are allowed to access supervisor and laboratories and libraries, uh, of course, to students who have lack of skill lab. Uh, it is a recommendation by academic counselor to uh, add their skills. And we have to an emergency curriculum to change for the time. We have finished to theory-based learning first and then continue the practice learning based uh, practice based learning in the next semester or when the uh, zone is changed by green or if this condition is not possible we can take it with uh, last program in the student for uh, first year and two year and then uh, edu educational institution we have to readiness to COVID protocol uh, like uh, clean toilets and then hand wash facilities, provide disinfectant, face masks. Uh, we have to provide all near health services. 
uh, we have to protocol or standard operational procedure before entry the location, like check temperature, screening of COVID symptom, uh, like fever, cough, and then uh, flu. We have to do social distancing, and then we have to schedule for room disinfection. So in Yatsi College, we do uh, room disinfection about three times a day on seven on 13 uh, 1 uh, p.m and then on the last time of work and then there are non-academic activities in campus and then so what about midwifery education in yatsi college during covid 19 uh, we have an emergency curriculum uh, we do study from home using Google Classroom and then Zoom, uh, WhatsApp, quizzes, Google Form for theory examination maybe, and then YouTube for demonstration. And then we can evaluation of the learning process by Zoom face-to-face, uh, -face, uh, the lecture and the student drive. And then for the last year of student, uh, they are allowed to attend skill lab for preparing the final examination for the last for the last program but uh, there are we have to uh, allow only 10 students to come to laboratories for one session so other session uh, the the student have a schedule for to come in laboratories so in this uh, situation on uh, we hope to national and one international webinar so like this uh, I'm sharing to uh, midwifery education in Yatsi College it's almost have been to do in uh, Indonesian educational midwifery uh, thank you maybe let's do everything in our power to protect midwives so they can continue women and newborn safe. It's come from Dr. Natalia Kanim. Thank you very much for your great attention. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your excellent presentation. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Okay. So a lot of, uh, you see a lot of uh, things to uh, uh, know and understand from each other. Uh, a lot of things in common with Bangladesh as well. So uh, if you have any questions, please wait. Let us finish all the presentations and then we will go to the um, question answer sessions. Uh, after uh, Indonesia, could we please ask Bangladesh, Sheena Halder, to speak with her presentation? Thank you. Good morning to everyone. I'm very grateful for this wonderful opportunity to share about the continuation of midwifery education during pandemic, the experience through online classes. My presentation is based on our true experiences of how we are conducting our classes via online platforms in this pandemic. My presentation includes an introduction, steps taken before closure of academic sites, the educational process, online classes, theoretical studies and practical skills, assessments, virtual students welfare committee, advantages of online education, challenges of online education, story of Priyanka Banya, and a conclusion. So as we all already know, COVID-19 was first detected in Wuhan, China in December 2019 and it soon spread to several countries in only a few months. The first case was detected in Bangladesh on 8th March of 2020. Seeing all the tragic situations of other infected countries, our government also took some initiatives. Among them, one was to close down the educational institutions so we can prevent the fast spread of the virus. And so all our academic sites were also closed and all our students were sent home, not knowing for how long this day was going to last. So every one of us were feel fearful, not only regarding Corona, but also about academic concerns. So we never wanted to be left behind. So we continued our midwifery education from all the different corners of our country through the internet. 
So before stand, sending our students home, we explained to them why all this were happening through an introduction to the students about the corona situation all over the world and its detection in our country. We have provided a quick orientation to all the batches of the students about the prevention of the spread of this virus. We have also distributed some leaflets and posters to take home with them and they shared them with their families and relatives. We have also ensured that our students were taking their books with them when they went home. So this is the educational process of how we have progressed from mid-March till now. After our students went home, we have reorganized them into small groups consisting of eight to 10 members, and we have assigned a group teacher for each of those groups. Soon we started discussing lessons recently studied, and we had also some feedback sessions over phone calls. By April, we were able to find out uh, effective media for each of student. So we had to know how to communicate with them since some of our students did not own a smartphone we had to know when to call them and how. After achieving a stable communication system with them, we have started review classes through small groups, messenger groups, WhatsApp, and over phone calls. Then we have initiated our online classes from May of 2020. We started our new lessons and modules from then on. Prior to starting online classes, we have collected information from our students regarding having smartphones. Then we have created a Facebook group for each of those batches. Then we shared our online class routines there. Before every class, we have shared the soft copies of modular books chapter-wise. And regarding this, we had a different system for each student because some of them had better access through emails some wanted them as files on the social media, some preferred them as PDF files, and some wanted them as image formats. We have also sent the new modular books to students through courier services. We are having our online classes via two online platforms, the Zoom app and the Facebook Live. These platforms are selected based on the convenience of each academic site and its students. Before we began, we also ensured some prerequisites, that is, having a smartphone or device, and an access to the internet connection. I would like to share our experiences of taking online classes in these platforms. The first one is Zoom app. The Zoom app allows the teacher to see the students and their interactions during the classes, which allows the students also to ask questions in case of any confusions, and thus it allows an interactive communication among the students and the teachers. The students can also write in the comment box. However, if someone wants to watch the video later, they have to download the video, and it requires strong network, more data, and device storage capacity. The other platform we use is the Facebook Live. This one consumes less amount of internet and thus costs low. Video remains available for later watch, and it's very easy to access. There's no need to download the videos to watch them later. Moreover, the students can also comment during the class on the comment box, which the teacher and other students can also see. This is a visual presentation of our students' online class attendance from May to August. The first bar chart here shows the attendance of students during the live classes, and the second one shows the percentage of students attending classes after the live streaming ends. So we can see here, the highest attendance during live streaming was 91% and the lowest attendance was 22%. But the good news is that these percentages have increased because the students got the opportunity to attend the classes even after the live streaming has ended. And so we can see in the second chart, the highest attendance reached 99% and the lowest reached 62%. But for those students who are still missing the classes, we have called them up to help them fill up the gaps they have from those missed classes. We have started with the theoretical part. We have started theoretical classes of all the modules of all ongoing semesters. 
And for the practical part, we are sharing the checklist in groups. We are providing various video demonstrations and sometimes teachers are also demonstrating their skills in front, in front of the students during the class. Other than this, we conduct scenario-based problem-solving discussions with our students. Apart from classes, we are also continuing our assessments. These assessments include model tests, scenario-based problem-solving group discussions, assignments, and exams. Exams may be online exams or over phone exams. All sorts of assessments are followed by some feedback from both the teacher and the students. Happily, we are not bound only within the study books. We are also celebrating days as a part of our education. We have celebrated the International Day of Midwives. For this occasion, we have shared online poster on Midwifery Facebook page and with the stakeholders. And our students also participated in an essay writing competition. The given topic was role of midwives in COVID-19 situation in Bangladesh. Through this, we have learned about the in-depth knowledge and critical thinking of our students in this situation. We have also published the best essay written by our students on our official Facebook page. Then we have also observed the Safe Motherhood Day. For this, we have also shared the online posters on Emit Wifery Facebook page and with our stakeholders and students prepared arts on the theme and we have developed art collages and shared them on the internet as well. Along with all this, we have also initiated a virtual students' welfare committee. We have introduced a voice box through emails and also provided a hotline number through which students can share any problems, report any problems, messages, and raise their voices towards anything anonymously if wanted. We already held our first virtual students' welfare committee last month. The purpose of this meeting is to enhance academic support in which every individual can get the opportunity to learn, interact, and engage in all aspects of student life, regardless of age, sexual orientation, culture, physical, psychological, or socioeconomic circumstances, to discuss about the safety and security condition of the family and the neighborhood of our students during this pandemic to monitor and respond to students about any problems in their community, to share a continuous follow-up of the situation of our students. We are not only being faced with challenges, but we also have advantages of this online education. We, the teachers and students, are experiencing new learning experiences. We're earning experiences which will be really helpful for us to initiate hybrid model in future and further higher studies. It is also improving our computer and internet skills. I would like to share some of the challenges we are facing and how we are trying to overcome them. Number one, adaptability struggle. Since this is our first time in online education and it is a new learning system for all of us, we're trying to overcome this struggle through explanation of the processes to the students and their guardians and helping them understand its benefits through encouraging them. And for us teachers, we have also received support through faculty development training. Network problem. This includes mobile data connection problems, especially for those who are living in remote areas. To overcome this, our students are attending classes from wherever they can find some good network. We are also providing them some recorded videos of the classes. Inability to operate smartphone. To overcome this, the group teachers showed the students how to operate them through voice calls, video calls, and YouTube videos. One of the big challenges we face is the unavailability of smartphone. Students are borrowing smartphones from their family members or neighbors. Other than that, Bragg University and one of our partner organizations have provided some 57 smartphones to our students till now. Bearing the cost of internet is also a challenge for many students since this pandemic has led to financial crisis in many of the families of our students. And so, Bragg University is also supporting students through providing internet packages. 
72 students have already an access to Brett University and 70 students more will receive this access from 1st September. Another challenge is that many students cannot attend the live classes and respond on time due to various situations at home. To minimize such problems, our students are going to places with some stable network. Sometimes they also watch the videos later and we teachers are also communicating with them continuously in their con convenient ways. There are more problems due to financial crisis, problems like dropouts, problems like payment, and the situations along with this problem are forcing many, many parents of thinking about getting their daughters married. To prevent such outcomes, we are counseling students and guardians regarding the early marriage and its consequences and the importance of completing this course. Other than that, we have provided the opportunity to have their payments in installments. Other than that also, from all of our academic sites, we're looking for some sponsor who are willing to help these needy students to overcome these struggles and complete their course and achieve a bright future. This pandemic situation left all of us with very limited or no social interactions and physical activities, which results in mental health issues like fear, anxiety, worries about financial problems and the current status due to COVID-19, which barriers self-esteem as well. Developing Midwives Project always gives equal priority to students' mental health along with the education. And so we're trying to overcome these problems through discussions on virtual students' welfare committee meetings. Another big challenge is the lack of skill practice. Since midwifery actually needs skill, practice is of great value. But at home, our students are not being able to practice most of those procedures. To minimize the amount of the gap here, we are providing videos and online class demonstrations by teachers and also we're ensuring that they at least know and understand when, how, and what to do when situations arise while providing midwifery care through having scenario-based problem-solving discussions with our students. Other than this, the final year students have been given the opportunity for clinical placements with standard precautions at sites like Brack maternity centers where there is less risk of contacting the coronavirus. It also provides platform for respectful maternity care, which is not the medicalization model of care. And with their own choices, many students have already started their shifts and teachers are accompanying them there in every shift. I would like to share a story, a true story of one of our students. This is how she's trying to complete her studies even in this pandemic. This is Priyanka Banya final year student from Shimantik Academic Site. She currently lives in Sri Mongol Tea Garden in Silet. Her life altogether at this very young age is full of barriers. Her family has financial problems since her father could not work anymore due to an accident. As for her mother, it's too hard for her to maintain a family of six members with the very little profit she makes. And so her parents sometimes do not want to understand the importance of her attending online classes. Along with all these problems, there's also a network problem in her area. However, she still manages to attend the classes by walking more than a kilometer every alternate day to a friend's house to borrow her phone and watch the videos of those classes. From there, she makes her own notes and contacts with the teacher if needed. Then later she returns home in the evening. Walking that far these days is not easy due to various environmental and social obstacles. Surrounded by challenges, but she never gave up. Now Brack University is also supporting her by providing internet data packages so that she can carry her struggle to a very successful end. Just like Priyanka, there are more stories of our strong midwifery students. We surely have a lot of challenges, but we never stop. Many things may seem a misery right now, but we're glad that we're getting the privilege to continue our midwifery education online. 
This was made successful through the united effort from the teachers, students, and the management. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sheena. Thank you very much. Um, you have represented Bangladesh, um, how we are struggling with our midwifery education in COVID situation. Now we will go to the last speaker from New Zealand, Andrea Gilkinson. Andrea, your presentation. Thank you. Uh, good evening from New Zealand. Um, I would like to um, say a very warm thank you to BRAC Developing Midwives Project uh, for setting up this webinar and for inviting me to speak. It's wonderful to see so many of um, our old friends from Bangladesh and other parts of the world. Um, so yeah, thanks again for setting up this wonderful webinar and for the previous two speakers who shared um, the incredible work that they are doing with um, providing midwifery education during the pandemic. So um, I bring greetings from New Zealand. We are, I'm situated in Auckland in the northern part of the North Island and we're situated right down in the Pacific, Pacific Ocean. So even though we're far apart from all of you, we are very privileged to have many international connections and collaborations with midwifery educators around the globe and the sharing of our experiences for providing quality midwifery education is always our common goal for improving the lives of mothers and babies globally. Um, in New, I'll just talk about midwifery education in New Zealand. So before 1992 in New Zealand, you had to be a nurse before you could study midwifery. But after 1992, we have direct entry midwifery, which means that people who don't necessarily have a nursing degree could be a midwife and do the Bachelor of Midwifery. So since 2011, the Bachelor of Midwifery degree is a four-year degree, which includes 2,400 theory hours and 2,400 practice hours. So a total of 4,800 hours. And so the education therefore includes on-campus teaching in the labs and simulation and in class, as well as working in the clinical area alongside midwives. So you can see that this would be greatly impacted by COVID. At AUT, we also offer postgraduate midwifery education, which includes masters and doctoral programs. Our postgraduate students are all practicing midwives. So postgraduate education is provided by distance um, to work, along, work with our students who are working midwives. With COVID-19, our postgraduate students are having to juggle their midwifery practice alongside their study, which has been challenging for many. New Zealand has a has a, has a low maternal and infant mortality rate. We are blessed with many resources and a government which makes maternity care free for women. When midwifery autonomy was reinstated in New Zealand in 1990, midwives could then choose to be self-employed, providing continuity of care to women and their families as their lead maternity carer or LMC. Or midwives can work in the hospitals to provide provide 24 hour rostered shifts to inner facility. And approximately half of New Zealand's midwives are self-employed and the other half are employed. In New Zealand, 94% of women have an LMC midwife who's her main carer and midwifery students are educated in this model of care. So the COVID-19 situation in New Zealand. We have been very, very fortunate in New Zealand that compared to many other parts of the world, we have relatively few cases of COVID-19. We're a small island nation with a population of 5 million. So it's been possible to close our borders and reduce the rate of the virus entering our country. To date, we have had 1,683 cases in total and 22 deaths. So New Zealand has taken the stance of going hard and fast and devised levels of restriction to reduce the spread of COVID. So we've moved through 
through these levels of restrictions according to the numbers of COVID cases. And the first, as for the other two countries we've heard about, the first cases occurred in March and were spread through gatherings such as a wedding and an aged care facilities. We first went to level three restrictions on March the 23rd, but two days later, we moved to level four, the most restrictive restrictions, um, which we stayed at until April the 27th when we moved back to level three. During these level three and four restrictions, we had no on-campus teaching. Everyone stays at home in their bubble with other immediate family members, unless they're essential workers. Uh, we have no clinical placements for students. Everyone has, if they go outside their home, has to be maintained to be stay two metres apart. Um, travel was limited between the re restrictions and the country borders were closed. So people entering New Zealand go into quarantine for two weeks um, before they can come into the country. Um, so all gatherings were cancelled and all public venues were closed. With the reduction in numbers, on May the 13th, we were able to reduce the restrictions back to level two, which where we could be back and the university was open again, schools were open again. And right down on June the 8th, level one, we were pretty much back to normal. We had, we proudly had, um, had no cases of COVID in the community for over 100 days from June the 8th. We were, all, we were back on campus, students were in clinical, life had returned to normal. However, we have had another outbreak of COVID in the community in Auckland, the area of Auckland, uh, where, area of New Zealand where, where I live and where we work at AUT. Um, and so we have had to return on August the 12th back to lockdown level three. Um, well, and this is continuing at, at this point in time. So how have we continued midwifery education with these restrictions? And we have found the elements, four important elements for maintaining midwifery education during the COVID-19 epidemic. They are connection, kindness, celebration, and innovation. So what did we do to connect? All of our learning and teaching and assessments went online. We had faculty, midwifery faculty had weekly Zoom meetings with the student representatives. The head of department, that's Judith Makara Cooper, who's on this meeting, program leaders and course leaders did a weekly Zoom live session for students. Through having these connections, students are supported in the learning and they have a plan and they're given the resources that they need. We know, through connections, we know what the students' concerns are issue, and issues are for them, what's working and what isn't. We can respond and change things so that students have the best opportunity to learn during the lockdown. And acknowledging the stress that everybody was under during in this, this way ensures it can be dealt with and not become a problem, an overwhelming problem, and affect students' learning. In terms of kindness, the midwifery faculty, we gathered weekly for a, via Zoom, um, Zoom for a coffee and to share how we and our families were coping during the lockdown. And this provided us with support, friendship and collegiality. And kindness helped us to make sure we all had what we needed to be effective teachers in a very changing and worrying world. Celebration. Um, so, like as Sheena said, they celebrated International Midwives Day, so did we. We had an online Zoom meeting with our entire midwifery school and the different students recorded videos and celebrated um, being a student midwife or being a midwife. And celebration is really important for learning as it gives strength to the students and staff, reminding us of why we're in the program, why we're studying midwifery or why we are midwives. It reminds us that during a time of stress and anxiety that there's hope and that together we can achieve our goals. It gives support to those who are struggling with mental health issues, family issues, financial issues and other issues reminding, by reminding them that they're not alone. They're part of a midwifery family who are committed to supporting them. Celebration refreshes and refuels the heart and the spirit. 
we had weekly Zoom meetings with all of the student years, and it was a really important strategy to make sure that students' voices and concerns were heard, and we did whatever we could to support their learning. Kindness ensures that faculty and students feel appreciated and supported. We know what's going on for each other and we can ease the burden for each other. We can take the pressure off students and colleagues when we see they're struggling and provide them with options and plans, which means they can still succeed. When the campus is closed and students are, are unable to go into clinical, they're doing all their learning from home and that needs innovative teaching methods. Fortunately, in New Zealand, we mostly have reliable internet connections um, and students do have devices, although AUT, the university did provide um, laptops for students who didn't have those and we did pro provide um, internet connections as well where that was needed. So we use an online platform called Blackboard. Students were provided with online learning packages and activities and recorded lectures which they could do at home and then meet via Zoom for discussions and tutorials. So using Zoom, um, as you all know, um, helps us to be able to teach and connect as we do in the classroom. We would use the breakout rooms within Zoom to break students into small groups to have smaller discussions and students can use the chat um, function to be able to ask questions and discuss the subject. Innovative ways of learning were devised, such as when the first year students were learning about the pelvis. They couldn't have the dolls and pelvises which they'd normally have in, when they were in, in class and in the simulation. So they made cardboard pelvises at home and a model baby and they could learn about the mechanism of labor that way. Um, and this video is show using a balloon and a ping pong ball, which is how students could see how the cervix thins and dilates during labor. These are just a few of the, of the amazingly innovative things which can be done online. So we've now finished semester one of teaching in this way and commenced semester two. And at this time, the theory, pay, theory courses have had excellent results. There hasn't been any significant impact of COVID on, on those results. There've been a lot of requests for extensions and special considerations and we've worked hard with students to make sure they have the support that they need to complete their work. And there are a small number of students whose work due to family circumstances has been impacted. Um, we're working with them and coming up with a plan so that they can continue. So, as, you know, of course, the main challenge is the clinical experience during the COVID-19 pandemic. And so we've had some different scenarios for students depending on the level of restriction, the levels two, three, and four. So one of the scenarios is that when students can't go to the School of Midwifery and they don't have access to the laboratory or simulation and cannot go into clinical. Another scenario is that students can come into the school and have access to the laboratories but can't go into cl clinical practice. And the third scenario is some final year students can go to practice alongside midwives in the community. So when students can't go into the school of midwifery and don't have access to and, and can't go into clinical practice either, we were able to um, link them up with some virtual online midwifery um, practice. For example, some students were able to be, work alongside a virtual clinic through telehealth um, and join in clinical practice that way. Um, some AUT third year students were able to provide um, telehealth information to women around healthy start in pregnancy. So the students would phone the woman and talk to them about um, health, health and keeping themselves healthy during pregnancy, um, about the New Zealand maternity system, about all their choices for birth, and about the how to um, and for the postnatal care as well. So this was a um, these were questions. These were things that a midwife would normally discuss with the, with the woman when she went to visit her in the clinic. The students were able to do this over the telephone. So it was a really good learning for them and good for the woman as well. We're able to teach some clinical skills through online 
version on, in, a, in an online way. So we have an online learning packages for a skill such as suturing. So students were given a suturing kit that they had at home and they could work through the online learning package at home um, learning to suture. Then the other scenario was when students could come into the, into the university, into the simulation labs, but not go into clinical. So students could come in in small groups of no more than 10 with a teacher and using all the contact tracing and distancing requirements, um, the teachers would use scenarios, role plays and, and develop skills um, and drills with the students. In 2020, 90% of our first year students' clinical experience will be in simulation. So normally first year students would have a placement with a midwife during, their first, during this um, second semester. But due to pressure on midwives during COVID-19, we've decided to provide their learning as 16 days of simulation. And it's very appropriate because the students need to learn these skills and they need plenty of practice. So in this, we're making the simulation scenario based, they're using lots of peer teaching, um, role play and all other kinds of activities. And the other, the other scenario is that senior third and fourth year students can go out into, into practice with their midwives. In the second wave of COVID that we're experiencing now in Auckland and in the return to level three has meant, meant that the university is closed. Most students are unable to go into clinical, but our final year students are, were already out with, with community LMC midwives. They've been placed with those midwives for a long placement. And all of those midwives have agreed for their senior students to stay with them practicing during level three. So these final year students are learning all about practicing midwifery in a pandemic, how to run a distance antenatal clinic, visiting mothers and babies in the community and using PPE, for example. So we just got these final slides is about the midwifery students experience during the COVID-19 pandemic. And the students tell, tell us that there was some, some highs and some lows and the highs and the really positive things for the students is that they had more time at home with those that they love, with their families. They saved money because they didn't have to travel to or travel to, into university or into their clinical placements. And they found the online learning convenient. On the, some of the challenges were that some students struggled without the hands-on simulations or time out in clinical placements. And the other thing is that um, many of our students have children of their own and families of their own. So their children were at home from school. They were trying to study, trying to look after their children. And as this student says, that equals madness. Um, some of the, some of the um, things which the students said helped them during the lockdown, they said that was helpful that they were given time to be with their families the open and ongoing communication that happened between the educators, the meetings and the announcements, and that their Facebook page provided support and a place for them to voice their concerns. So finally, you know, thank you um, for inviting us to be a part of this webinar um, and for the opportunity to hear about midwifery education and during COVID-19 in all parts of the world. And you know, please stay safe. Um, and from all of us here in New Zealand. Keep on forgetting and unmuting. Um, thank you, Andrea. Thank you very much for a fantastic presentation. Um, uh, uh, it, it's really nice to learn what is being done in New Zealand in terms of midwifery education. Uh, I had seen a number of hands raised. I have seen Faisal Bhai, but I think uh, his hand is no more here. Uh, Asmira, could you start with Asmira? Uh, she has uh, some question. Asmira, are you here? I have seen your hand raised. Um, 
and uh, okay then maybe i go to chat box there are a number of questions uh, to indonesia last week um, uh, one question is midwifery education is midwifery education a direct program in your country or could you highlight uh, what is your selection process last okay. week Hello. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it is about uh, selection. Yeah. What uh, is your selection process? Yeah. And uh, what is your? Uh, is it a direct entry program? Uh, for the selection programs, uh, they are come from high school, uh, and then they have to pass the examination like uh, academic potential with the number seventy, and then the psychological test. And then in the interview test, and then uh, we have to check their health uh, uh, with the not uh, complications about the generative, and then uh, they have to make some uh, clinical learning on the midwife community about uh, one until two weeks. It is the selection of the student in our campus. Um, and also, uh, somebody was thinking that uh, what the differences with education program between Diploma 3 and Diploma 4? Uh, uh, is there any difference? In Indonesia, I uh, have a qualification framework. For the D3, it's a uh, five level. So, uh, uh, do uh, we can uh, say that D4 is for the uh, teacher, teacher for the D3. But now uh, all all of the teacher in Indonesia have to register. So for the finish the program D4, uh, we until to 2020. So next time uh, D4 is not uh, launched the program again in Indonesia and then mm -hmm. next time uh, all of the lecture in Indonesia has to doctorate level okay uh, you have also a number of questions but I will come back to you again uh, there is it's a kind of generic question to everybody that uh, due to the pandemic there are challenges faced at different levels of education uh, but in terms of midwifery education uh, uh, we are continuing education in digital platforms. But what about practical education or skill practice, which is my, my question as well. How are these being delivered in your respective country? Any plans for the future? I would start with Andrea, that uh, what can we learn from here? And what practical, what would you do for practicals and skill practices? So, yeah. Yeah, that's such a good question, and it, and it's um it's it's the thing that I think we all struggle with the most is the is the clinical practice, and um as as you heard, we are using a lot of simulation um, for the first year students. They will just be having simulation, and we worried about that at first and thought about it, but there's some research which is showing that simulated practice can be as good as re real practice we find that very hard to believe but but uh, you know I think there is some some justification for that and it can at least students can learn the skills that way um, and as I think we heard that um, ev in everywhere the final year students are able to go out with mid with midwives um, using all the you know protection and so on as well but um, I think this is this, and what we will do is when we can, we will, uh, when it's safe to do so, our students will be going out and making up those clinical hours. They still will need to complete the hours for their learning. But um, I don't know if anybody um, else has any comment. Yes, uh, yeah, and maybe um, Indonesia can add that, uh, yes, from here we have, uh, uh, we have some unique lessons learned. Well, this pandemic has taught us uh, maybe we can uh, shift from uh, traditional method of teaching. What would we recommend that uh, um, uh, can we shift from traditional method of teaching or um, 
can we at least uh, have some lessons learned from here for our future direction? Anybody, Indonesia, Bangladesh? Um, uh, maybe uh, Sharmina from Bangladesh can answer this question. Sharmina? Okay, yes, Appa, thank you. Uh, thanks uh, to all the speakers for uh, sharing the experiences. Actually, um, I also want to go with the, uh, Andrea that uh, from this experience, uh, because we have started from Bangladesh perspective, you know that the situation is totally different and our students, media for students are all around the all corner of the Bangladesh and they are from the low socioeconomic uh, status and uh, the internet connectivity the, and the, all the devices, uh, uh, managing all the devices and the managing the internet data, it, is, uh, uh, quite, it was quite difficult for them, but they managed. So we are very glad that they managed to continue the media for education. And from these, actually, uh, we have learned that uh, uh, from uh, actually in coming future, you know that the, in the media for education, our 40% is the uh, theoretical and 60% is the practical. And from uh, our experiences, uh, we think that we can actually establish a hybrid model in future where actually uh, both the uh, online classes and also the practical classes, we can make a different type of models. And I think that this will also help us to manage the faculty dropout issues and other logistic issues and also other funding issues. So I think that it has created an opportunity uh, to think uh, a new innovation in future. Thank you. Uh, Sharmina, could you also add, there is a question from Nepal uh, that um, let me know more about developing midwives pro project. This is Kiran from Nepal. In two, three lines, would you please uh, answer uh, Kiran? Okay, uh, developing midwife projects that uh, uh, we have started developing media projects is a project uh, uh, that uh, BRAC, uh, is uh, from the BRAC University. We have started uh, the three years diploma in media for courses along with the government in 2012. And uh, we have uh, seven academic sites in all corner of Bangladesh. And uh, all, and we have the, all the facilities. It is a uh, residential, um, uh, residential study. Uh, uh, education and all the stu uh, students have to complete the graduation and later on they have to sit for the registration uh, uh, under the BNMC. So uh, that's all and I think that uh, I can send you a two-pager, we have a two-pager and also we have the brochure and if you share your uh, email address uh, in the chat box I will uh, send you uh, all the information. I think that it will help you to know better. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sharmina. Um, uh, Professor Malubika from JPG has asked a similar question that uh, uh, um, how this pandemic, uh, lessons from this teaching during COVID-19 pandemic, how it can be included later when they are back to the traditional method of teaching. Uh, I think we have partially answered yes. this, but uh, again, if Andrea or uh, um, Yes, or uh, Nasri wants to answer, add to it. Uh, can you uh, rip, uh, can you? Uh, I will repeat, I will repeat. Our question is, what is the unique lessons learned from teaching during COVID-19 pandemic and uh, how it can be included later when they are back to the traditional method of teaching? Okay, uh, this is make some uh, creativity from the lectures, how to send the material project about the topic of midwifery, like uh, before uh, Andrea presentation about uh, repair of perineum, uh, we can uh, use the form and then below to get hacking uh, skill for the student when they come to uh, laboratories uh, and get the pantum practice, uh, get to practice in pantum, uh, sorry. So uh, it makes change the lecture, how to uh, make the learning process more fun because uh, 
we know that Zoom, we, uh, WhatsApp, and then uh, Google Classroom is bored by uh, student. And then uh, it's same with uh, Bangladesh that uh, internet connection in Indonesia is low. It have a uh, expensive price. So uh, if we don't uh, tune to uh, creative uh, process learning, all uh, twenty minutes for uh, care to to us about for lecture. So uh, it makes the change for the lecture how to send the creative process learning for the student. Uh, to make they are focused with with every topic in this situation. Thank Maybe you, thank is you. that my yeah, yeah definitely. Thank you. Uh, uh, I think I will throw this question to um, Andrea. Um, it says uh, it says about practical knowledge and skill session. How how you recommend to do it online? Yeah, so it's, it's through being very creative. Um, YouTube is a wonderful source of uh, fabulous demonstrations. Um, mm -hmm. And as I showed you, we've, uh, you do, do things like the students make their own cardboard pelvises. They can, they can, they can have a suturing kit at home. So it has required quite a lot of imagination and creativity on the part of the of the teachers, um, but it, it's but it, it's amazing what can be done. And you know, I think the question before was, you know, what will we keep on doing um, after the you know pandemic is over? And and I think one of the you know we are going to keep doing quite a lot of distance learning because it's, it's it's in many ways it's good for students to be able to learn from home and do certain activities at home. But we've really thought about when they're coming into the university and on campus, how we're going to use that time with them. And that's the time we will, when we will, will be doing the simulations, the clinical skills, the discussions, and, and we wouldn't bring them in for a lecture anymore, for example. So um, yeah, it is that, but that clinical, clinical practice is the, it is the biggest challenge for all of us, I think. Um, and, and as it's sort of saying in the, in the chat that in the, in the short term, I think we're managing it and we'll get the students through. But if it goes on for a long time, then, you know, we could, you know, somehow students have to get that hands-on experience with women. So, um, yeah, so, so that may, yeah, they'll have to think of ways around that. Right, definitely. And yeah. as they are, uh, you know, uh, our technical people like uh, a midwife, like nurses, health workers, doctors, they have to face the problem anyway in COVID situation. So uh, during the student life, maybe at the final year, uh, they can be placed uh, in, the, in some uh, um, centers and uh, with taking a number of protections and um, uh, all the protections uh, that that is also a practice and we yes. can select the um, uh, select the centers where there is uh, less uh, covid stu students like uh, in bangladesh we are trying to do it in black centers where you know only mid, uh, uh, maternal and child health is given so there are innovative ways we can try to have uh, some practical uh, exposure under some some midwifery skilled uh, um, uh, uh, um, you know, technical people, so that that would be able to help. But there is a lot of questions now. I am not sure whether all the questions can be addressed. Uh, first, I would give uh, an, uh, uh, request Nazreen Akhtar uh, to raise her question. Nazreen. Nazreen, are you around? Yes. Nazreen? Can you yes. hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah. So hello everyone and uh, thank you very much Andrea for a very practical experience oriented presentation. It's really helped us a lot. But the thing is, I was wondering being a mother by myself, so we feel like in the pandemic time how this maternal issue has been taken care of. And as a public health person, there is another concern and worry. So looking the fact like you know, when this teaching comes to the understanding that these midwives get uh, the skill at the same time knowledge. So knowledge part can be re uh, reasonably managed and even 
better manage some time with some innovation through the online connectivity. Uh, maybe some percentage of the you know adjustment we have to make it through. But when it comes to the skill part, then my only concern is because uh, it's fine to go with YouTube and all because I'm a faculty also. So when we go for like I go to take the online classes, I feel that something is missing there. It's like something the feel of the interactivity touching like you know because this is a very practical skill based training for the midwife program. So you know touching a mother's you know body or having a kind of a real practicality that feel and pulse is not there anymore. But still, when this pandemic time, we have to do, there's no other alternative. And Selena Pa was telling that, okay, we can, at the later part of the course, we can, uh, you know, give them to some of the placement where it's not that much risk, but they can really hands-on learning, they can get it through. So these are the innovation alternatives we can make from diversified way. You know, it depends on country to country, context to context. But do you have any alternative, like, you know, the good part of this pandemic, pandemic is really making a lot of devastation, but a lot of learning to at the same time. We are used to the internet connectivity education. So how much we can take it through when the pandemic is not there, we are into the new normal world. At the same time, how to handle the client, the client connectivity. So we can go for a little bit mobile connectivity with the client. So every of the case of as a pregnant mother, if the connectivity has been managed, by the mobile, then the midwife have more control over the case. So that connectivity in practical sense can take it through when the, on, I mean, the pandemic is no more there, inshallah, and someday, I hope, surely. So what are your suggestions? What are the things that are solidly can be taken through in the new normal world when the pandemic is even not there, but we can take best advantage of this to continue. Thank you. Yes, I think that's, you know, Nazneen, thank you. You know, you raise such an important issue and it's something that I think we are all grappling with. Um, it, it's, it, it, is, it is a major concern. And um, I think, you know, uh, we, we, you know, e even, it's not only the student, you know, the students can do telehealth and, and so on, as you say, but there's nothing that beats actually putting your hands on the woman. Um, and it's what we're seeing as well for the midwives in, who are practicing. They do part of the consultation over the phone and then the woman comes in for a brief period of time and they quickly do the palpation, listen to the fetal heart and do the blood pressure and then she's out again. And I think the women are really struggling because they're missing out on the connection with the midwives as well. So, you know, I think, I think, for, I think it's impacting not only the students, but the midwives and, and women as well, when they can't have um, that real connection with, with their midwives. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, I don't think any of us have, have simple answers, but, you know, as, as, as I've said, you know, we're sort of putting the students with midwives when we can, they use all the protection, but even even given that, it's it's still midwifery is is different in this pandemic in this world at the moment, isn't it? So, um, yeah, I yeah I don't know if anybody um, has any has any inspirations <laughs> how we can how we can do this. Um, uh, was, uh, I have to add another question to you, mm. Andrea. I think oh, yeah. uh, in, after that I will go to Indonesia back again. It is about a, a, a kind of recommendation that what you suggest about what kind of PPE midwifery university are suggesting in Indonesia and Auckland for the final year students who are doing clinical practice in their community. Uh, it is about what kind of PPE. It's very important that specifically what they really need as a midwife. Um, Andrea and also Indonesia, uh, uh, this question is Andrea start. Oh, okay. Um, so, so the PPE includes the gloves, face masks, and gown. Um, and uh, yeah, I th yeah, I think I think that's I think that's right. Um, it, what what they what they're using? Uh, and yeah. Glasses? Do you think? Uh, yes, a, fa a face mask. The, the okay. um, plastic face mask, like they use in surgery. I think. Yeah. Yeah. And what are you using uh, for midwifery PPE? Last three. 
Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Doctor. This is uh, for our student who has come to the campus. Uh, they must wear a face mask and then a face seal. Then uh, from mouth and nose, and then uh, we have uh, some mirror, a plastic mirror for interaction. And then uh, in laboratories, they have to uh, self hand scans and then the gown and then uh, before they entry the laboratories they have to hand wash their stuff their hands and then uh, be, after they uh, practice uh, in laboratories they have to clean self about the tools uh, then they are using when they are practice like that in equipment in PPA. And then when uh, they are in community. So uh, I would to uh, clarification because clinical setting in student in Indonesia is uh, forbidden by government. But if they meet uh, the mom in the community who has uh, pregnant or postpartum who needs uh, midwife care, because our institution, a uh, health institution, uh, make some uh, make some uh, for uh, for uh, uh, f for practice, it can only uh, ten women for to explanation. So uh, the health pregnant woman not suggest to to go to health institution if they are not have. Uh, danger symptoms so it can um, make our student to follow up their health uh, only uh, antenatal care examination a little a simple examination for uh, our student to do that in their community their self community their area there just only that but uh, it has to uh, conduct with their lecture or academic uh, supervisor because uh, we need to follow up uh, and then uh, prevent our student affected with uh, COVID-19 like that in our campus. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lashri. But there is a number of interest about your uh, uh, special program on entrepreneurship for midwives. Maybe if you could add two, three lines on it. Yes, because uh, Indonesia has a lot of midwifery education institutions. So actually, uh, they uh, focus on the big cities uh, in the rural and then the other uh, cities who has uh, far from uh, Big cities uh, still rare of midwife, but uh, because in this big cities have a high uh, high challenge, uh, they have to uh, tough with their midwife care. So entrepreneurship can uh, supply them with uh, how to marketing about midwife care how to make some unique uh, care between other midwife. Okay. Uh, there are, um, I will uh, add one or two question maximum. Uh, Farhana Akhtar from Shimantik, you raised your hand. Farhana Akhtar. Farhana Akhtar, Shimantik. Okay, uh, you get ready if you're here. Uh, in the meantime, uh, maybe Bangladesh uh, can take this question. Are there any initiative taken from the government or any other private organization to provide support in continuing free education? Uh, Sharmin, maybe you can answer that is government initiative about continuing midway free education. Yes. Thank you, Appa. Uh, yes, uh, actually, uh, along uh, with the uh, private institutes, few private institutes, government also has initiated uh, uh, to continue on, um, uh, online education and they are using the Zoom platforms and, and uh, they are 
also they're pro uh, providing the education as well as uh, they have prepared a schedule that their faculties are uh, uh, one day a the week uh, they used to go to the uh, class uh, to the institute and also uh, they uh, try to uh, actually uh, teach the practical uh, sessions through the zoom link so they are they have continued actually before that uh, there all the faculty members have been trained uh, by the zika uh, and uh, now they have started i think that they have started uh, for last uh, uh, they are continuing for last two months okay but yeah. as you know that that there are 41 government institutes and all over bangladesh so sometimes uh, it becomes difficult actually uh, to uh, cover all the students. So I think that they're covering around 40% of the students. Okay, okay, great. Uh, Farhana, are you around? Okay, um, uh, um, Sheena, would you like to answer a question here that how we are thinking of going forward with practical classes of final year? Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Yes. Okay, Assalamu alaikum. Yes, yes ma'am. Yeah. This is Farhana from Shimantik, student of third year, fifth batch. I have raised a question. In this pandemic situation, though we are continuing theory class through online platform, but how can we improve our practical skill? Yes, that has been answered already by Andrea uh, uh, about a lot of things. And also, Sheena can add Sheena about can our add. plan. In uh, in uh, um, uh, practical sessions, very short. We don't have enough time, Shina. Okay, so our students came back from their home, the final year students. After they came back to the academic sites, um, they have practiced in the skill lab only here at the academic site for a week. So they could remember the procedures and practice before going to the actual clinical sites. So now they're going to the clinical sites with proper precautions and the teachers are also accompanying them there so that we can also ensure that in every shift they are safe and also they're practicing the right procedures. Maybe sometimes they forgot already what to do and the procedures, so we are there to help them. And also every week we have one day in which they're not going to the clinical sites, they're going to stay here and practice at the skill lab with the teachers. So that's how we are planning to continue with the um, clinical practice, the practical procedures that our students have to do, the final year students. So they're going to prepare themselves with the skills as well as how to maintain midwifery practices even in a pandemic situation. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank you very much. I, uh, uh, is there in, uh, I think it, we are already at the end of the webinar. It's, uh, it's uh, already in, um, around 12.30. Uh, I think if there is no burning question around, I would um, ask uh, uh, Mushtaq Bhai, uh, our advisor, and you know, um, uh, it was in his heart how midwifery program started in Bangladesh. I would request Mustak Bhai to say something for us. Mustak Bhai, are you around? Yes, I am here. Uh, thank you, Selena. I think it, it was a terrific uh, session, uh, and and I congratulate all of you uh, for for this uh, very lively, very informative uh, 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 webinar. Uh, I think uh, uh, it has been a very successful webinar in the sense that it has, it has become so popular. Right now, there are 98 people uh, online listening to what you have been saying. Uh, so, so this, 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 this uh, so, so you see, you must be very proud of, uh, of what, what you have done. Uh, but for me personally, I think, I think it was a very uh, great learning session. I have learned a lot about uh, what uh, 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 Lustre is doing in, in Indonesia, for example. I was really st stuck to, uh, to, to, stuck to, 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 to find out that, that uh, Indonesia has such a big uh, midwifery program. Uh, they have 693 uh, 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 midwifery programs across the country. Uh, and uh, uh, Bangladesh, with more than half of its population of Indonesia, we have 55 
of course, uh, our program, our, the, the midwifery uh, program in this country is, uh, is very new. It's only seven years old. Uh, but, but we have a lot to learn from, in, uh, from, from, from Indonesia uh, and, of course, from uh, New Zealand. Uh, so, 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 Andrea and uh, Alastri, uh, thank you very much uh, for, for, your, for your contribution uh, to this and, 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 to, and to my colleague, uh, Sheena. Uh, so, all you have done so well today. Uh, what we have learned as well, that, uh, that uh, a, a, a crisis may not be always a bad thing. Uh, so, so it has shown us how to really innovate, uh, and uh, and we have seen uh, so many innovations in Indonesia, in New Zealand, and also in Bangladesh. Uh, but obviously, there will be challenges. Uh, one of the major challenges that we have heard and we have been sort of grappling with is the is the clinical experience, uh, and 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 we have to find a good way to uh, uh, go around that. Uh, but 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 also there are other issues as well challenges in terms of the uh, social uh, uh, social vices. For example, in 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 Bangladesh, we are told by Sheena that uh, uh, some of the students, uh, the parents are pushing them to uh, early marriage. So 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 those are kind of uh, 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 problems that 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 we have heard today. Uh, and, and I'm sure this will uh, go a long way for, for all of us who are sort of trying to uh, uh, make uh, midwifery a, a, a profession in this country uh, uh, so, so to, to help us to take it forward. Uh, so, so thank you very much for, for all these um, uh, 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 sort of great uh, uh, sharing of ideas and experiences. Uh, and 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 I'm sure this will be uh, a, uh, one of the best uh, things in, that, that, that I have sort of experienced in in, in, in these last five six months. Uh, so so uh, my turn is to thank um, uh, all the panelists in in, in here. Um, uh, Andrea Gilkison from uh, Auckland, uh, um, Lassi Wenerni from. Um, uh, from Yaxi in Indonesia, and Shina Haldar from Brack University. We have done a terrific job, and thank you very much for your time. Uh, I, I, think, I think this is going to be very helpful for all, uh, all those of us who, who, are, who are sort of trying to push uh, 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 midwifery uh, in this world. Uh, uh, I just wanted to uh, sort of remind you that uh, uh, this is the first in a, in a, in a series of webinars that uh, the Black University will be organizing over the next few weeks. Uh, and the next one is on midwifery-led maternity centers. Uh, and I don't know when, when the date is, whether, whether the date has been fixed. But, but that will also 15 be... 15 September. Uh, 15 September. So, so, so you are all invited to also join in, in that. Uh, uh, because one of the challenges that we are facing now, uh, everywhere I think, is the is the is the uh, collateral effects of the of the COVID crisis, and we know that uh, apart from uh, uh, the COVID itself, it's it is affecting uh, all other health services uh, everywhere, including maternity services, and and uh, we should be hearing our own experiences in this country. Uh, uh, about um, uh, how 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 this is being tackled uh, by by uh, through the through the um, uh, midwifery led centers. Uh, so so with these few words, um, uh, I I wish to thank uh, all the uh, panelists uh, and also all of you who have uh, joined today and also who have uh, actively participated uh, in this. And I also wanted to uh, take this opportunity also to thank uh, the, the midwifery program and those who have been trying to organize this, uh, this, uh, this, this uh, 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 webinar uh, at, the, at the Black Gem Speaker School of Public Health. So I uh, wish you all and I um, wish, 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 uh, wish you uh, 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 good health and stay safe and uh, see you on the 15th of September. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have one point to add. 
I, I must um, uh, give special thanks to Judith, Michela, Evita, Indy uh, for joining the session and encouraging us to have a, um, a very good and very informative uh, webinar. Uh, thank Mushtaq Bhai for encouraging us all through. Uh, please join on 15th September and uh, we will hear some more. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.